Hey guys, I'm Asia and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be looking at item transport uh, within Rotary Craft and uh, let's just get cracking into it. Uh, oh, wrong. Chest. Mm. Okay, so this one's pretty easy to make. So you're going to need some base panels like that, uh, some liquid pipes and an impeller and uh, get it all working you need a uh, DC engine just to power it as a minimum uh, and of course a lever just to turn the DC engine on. Pretty simple. And go to your work table. Put the liquid pipes on the side and the base panel at the bottom and at the top, and then put your impeller in the center. And you get about 16 pneumatic item pumps. Now, the good thing about the item pumps is that um, should they have an item to move, they will check the end location, the destination, and if there's space, they'll move the item there. If there's no space, they won't move. So just as a comparison to our item ducks here, as you can see here, uh, it's gone dark red because this item is actually stuck in this pipe. So we're going to replace this uh, pipe system. So there's those items that got stuck. While this system has its uses, uh, for this uh, use that I have right now, it's not exactly what I want. Okay, so um, when you place these down, uh, they've got a little arrow showing the direction the items travel. And as you can see, as you place it down, um, the direction is away from you. So as you can see, items will travel in this direction. Okay, so if you want it to go in this direction, but then you want it to go uh, towards the farm direction, what you need to do is you need to place block like that. Oh my bad. I got that wrong. <laughs> Let's just get rid of that one. Like that. Sorry. You're gonna be pointing in the direction you want the item to go, sorry. Like this, this. As you can see they've also got GUI as well, which I'll show later. So to get an item to go down uh, a path and then change direction, the pipe itself must run into another pipe like this. Uh, I'll just show you, give you an example of what's, what you shouldn't do. Okay, so if we do it like this, as you can see, it doesn't run into a pipe, it just runs. This is incorrect. So we just uh, break this part and then put it like here. This is the correct way of doing it. So you should see uh, arrow should run into a block and then this one should be pointing in a different direction. So let's just grab all these and actually put them in the right place. Um, I should also mention that the trusty screwdriver will change the direction of items. However, I have noticed that uh, in particular, when you're transporting items up or down with this system and you want to, let's see if I can, do this without uh, tricking the GUI. Like that. See how we've got these facing the wrong direction? So if I want to change direction this one, it's working. Uh, I have noticed in a test world, occasionally, as you can see there, this pipe will change at the same time. I'm not sure what's happening here, if I'm doing it wrong or not, or if that's just a little glitch. I guess we'll find out later on. But, to resolve this, uh, I find that you should, um, one, get it get it right the first time when you're placing them down, you won't have any issues. Uh, okay, so, when we want to send something from here, over there, uh, we'll start from the location, like this, okay? And we'll jump up. Let's, uh, let's just put some walkways there too. So I can just get this oop, right quick, sorry. Okay. Uh, and up. So as you can see, direction of item travel, this, there. So let's just see. Do is 
then look, having a jetpack is great, but sometimes it's an issue. Okay, now so I'm gonna look quickly just turn the rain off. Go a little bit cheaty cheaty. Go away, rain. Bring the daylight out too. Back, why don't you go away? Now, the issue here is unfortunately two places pipe down, uh, so it's facing the in the right direction uh, from the get go. Uh, I had to be below the platform, so let's just make a little, uh, little platform for me to stand on first. There we go. There we go. You know what? I think I've actually put this in the wrong place. I probably have. So let's just break this part. Getting con up, oh, Dizzy. Okay, from here is what we want. Arr. I'll get this. As you can see, it's a little bit difficult to get it done first time correctly. Uh, let's get rid of that platform so nothing spawns on it. Uh. Oh, Mr. Skeleton down there. Okay, whoops. Got him at Gumby. Yes, we need that platform. Okay, here we go. Need to place one more down. There we go. So, as you can see, the item travels pointing towards the pipes. Excellent, excellent. Uh, have. Hmm, can I pick up that chest? We want to go like that. There we go. So the item should come out of here into this one. That, that, that. Okay. Let's remove this here. And then for the final part a DC engine. Now, these things do require power. Only the first one that's connected to the chest requires power. Uh, minimum power is 1.024 kilowatts. So essentially, 1 kilowatt of power. And the minimum rads is 256 rads a second which just happens to be the uh, output of a DC engine, so we're good there. And like that. So we've got it flowing in the right direction. And we've got these canola seeds in here. Now I was going to show you this GUI, so I'll show you the GUI before I turn it on. So at any point you can right click on it and you'll get a little item pump. Now, uh, filling this area won't do anything. For now, um, what I mean is, uh, for a midway pipe, it doesn't do anything. But for a pipe connected to a chest, such as the first one, this one can act as a blacklist, a whitelist. Um, you can tell it to ignore metadata. So, say if you've got an item out there that's a uh, different kinds of cobblestone, where it's got the same ID as cobblestone, right? But it may be a, a colon. 56 right so if you have it to ignore that it will see multiple types of cobblestone as the same thing as cobblestone uh, here we've got the MBT which I'm not quite sure what that means um, but I do know it's when you've got say two stone say you've got two pickaxes one's a little bit damaged if you ignore the MBT right it will see the damaged pickaxe the same as we'll see the non damaged pickaxe but if you change it to use it I think it also uh, picks up whether or not the tool has uh, um, special things on it. Oh, what are they called? Uh, enchantments. I'm sorry, I don't really use vanilla that often. And this one, use the or dictionary. The or dictionary. In which case, is if two ores, uh, both of them which are copper, generated by two different 
uh, mods, the order dictionary, if it sees the two ors exactly the same, then it will see the two ors. Anyway, but anyway, what we want to do now is we want to make sure that only the pipe pumps canola seeds. So we just get it here. We uh, right click on here, creates a ghost copy, and we want to set it to whitelist. So it will only pump out canola seeds. Okay, so let's just get this thing working. Where's the lever? There it is. And we'll put it there. Turn it on. The engine turns around. We are pulling canola seeds out. Okay, so as for power delivery, the uh, it will it will pull out one item every tick um, for every one kilowatt of power it has. So there's 20 ticks in a second, so essentially it pulls out 20 items in a second or so. I think I think that's the calculation. I might be wrong, but add more power and it pulls more items out uh, every go, up to a maximum. Of 64 stacks at a time I think um, and when in doubt check out your rotary craft book for extra information so if we go there which one which page is it on uh, it is it is is have I gone past it yes I have I know I have Let's take this a little bit slower. Nope. 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 Uh nope. Nope. Do do nope. Oh, okay, I'm um, going insane now. I swear I saw it in the book. Uh, that's power transfer. It's power transfer as well. These are utility machines. No. No. Nope, nope. Not these ones, no. How come I swear I was reading in this book? Yep, I'm stumped. There it is. Ah. Okay, there we go. Um, so essentially the pump can transfer one item per tick per kilowatt of input power therefore transfers uh, entire stacks simply supply 65 kilowatts of power. So essentially uh, 65 kilowatts will get you a stack at a time, more power transfer will power multiple stacks as there's no upper limit. So essentially you can put tons of power into this depending on how much items you need to move. Okay, so the power requirements minimum, that's essentially the DC engine. So, one example where I think this would be uh, absolutely awesome, oh, it's actually over here, is the item vacuum, which has already had all the stuff taken out. But if you can remember from the previous episodes how I was uh, doing ultra fast mining with the Sonic Borer, this essentially picks up like uh, 64 stacks of 64, like it picked up everything all in one go. If I supplied with enough power, it essentially would transfer everything really, 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 really fast into the chest. Where this one is a little bit slow, and I still had items spinning around this thing, waiting to be picked up. So I think that's about it for today, guys. Um, yeah, so please like, comment, subscribe, and all those other types of YouTube type stuff. And uh, actually, I should have just showed you whether or not this actually turned up on the other side. Yes, it did. There we go. Win. So until then guys, uh, nah.